Uh, welcome to the awards ceremony portion of our program. I hope you had a great time interacting and engaging our students about their projects. In this segment, you'll be hearing from Professor Sharistani, who's a co-director for senior design. But before we go to Professor Sharistani, I'd like to yield the lectern to Dr. Jung, who has some words of thanks and appreciation for the families. Dr. Jung, the lectern, please. Yes, uh, uh, what a wonderful set of presentations. Every team outdid itself, and it was absolutely fantastic to hear them and to see what they have accomplished. I want to thank the parents, the family members, the siblings, everybody who has supported the students even more so now because many times they might have been at home and I think somebody said but working late at night and probably disturbing everybody at home but whatever it is thank you for your tremendous support for the students I want to thank the faculty who have also just like the students had a challenging year and had to work from home and they might have had children and other members of their family that were all sharing the space as they were trying to mentor all of you at all times of the day and night. All of you are winners and uh, that whole team has come together, our family of BME, and I'm so proud and so happy that I belong to you and you belong to us. All right, go on. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jung, for those wonderful comments. I'm going to turn the lecture over to Professor Sharistani. Professor Sharistani teaches Senior Design 1. And let me tell you that when students arrive to Senior Design 2, they are well prepared. I'm going to yield the lecture to Professor Sharistani, and he will also be awarding the certificates of, of concentration. And then we'll go right into the awards for the poster and oral competitions. Professor Sharistani. Uh, thank you, Dr. Christie, uh, and uh, welcome to all the parents and the students and the teams. Um, uh, every year, every semester, when we go through this process, uh, although uh, we call it a Senior Design Expo or used to be called Senior Design Competition, it really is a showcasing of uh, your abilities, the students, the teams, the faculty, the program of how you can transform from a uh, team of individuals who've gone through certain courses and certain uh, uh, curriculum and ultimately have become uh, problem solvers. And, and, and it's, it's, it's great for, uh, to see, I've uh, been involved in the program for almost uh, 17 years, 18 years now. And uh, it's every year um, I don't uh, cease to be amazed with the accomplishments of the uh, students and the, uh, how the program can uh, positively and effectively influence them. So I want to congratulate all the teams. I know at some point, uh, a few minutes from now, we're going to be announcing, you know, what team uh, was uh, the uh, first place or the second place or the third place. But uh, we all know that you guys are all first place because, because we all know that the experience that you guys all went through and what you learn uh, can come near any, any individual awards or recognition that you could get in one day or in, in, in a minute. So, so I want to congratulate you. I want to congratulate the parents uh, who went through uh, a whole year of problem solving with their students, different kinds of problems, but still problems. Of, of uh, where to put their computers so the background could be appropriate and where the noise could not bother the, uh, the other family members while they're sleeping, while they're having a class at 7 a.m. in the morning with me and, uh, and so on and so on and so on. So uh, we all in one year became problem solvers in, in one shape or form. So I want to congratulate them. Also, I want to congratulate uh, obviously the advisors, all the faculty advisors who helped the teams as well as uh, the, uh, the sponsors, because the sponsor, without them, uh, we cannot have this program. So we have to congratulate and thank them for their contribution. So, so uh, again, uh, it's a great pleasure for me personally, because uh, I, I see these students at the beginning of the semester of uh, senior one, 
and uh, I can see the transformation all the way through that semester. And then ultimately I don't see them for another few months. And then I see them here as if they've been working for uh, 10 years, 15 years in industry, which, which is amazing to me how, how they can grow that, uh, that, that quickly. So, so again, congratulations. And, uh, and again, I want to congratulate also Dr. Christie. Uh, he does an amazing job with this uh, coordination of this program. And we're lucky that uh, he, he's uh, chosen to do this because I don't know if anybody else would have put this much of a heart and soul into this program than, than he does. So, so thank you, Dr. Christie. And obviously we cannot forget to thank the, uh, the, the Dr. Jung for uh, motivation and support, not regardless of what it is, uh, it, it, Dr. Jung is always there to, to support us, to, to, to get us through all of this. So again, Thank you. And then Orlando, obviously, be the problem solver of technical issues that uh, we all uh, always have. So, so again, thanks, everybody. And uh, congratulations for all your accomplishments. And, and look forward to hearing from you for years to come. Uh, Professor Sharistani, please stay there. I'm, I'm going to ask that you announce the certificates of concentration uh, coming up. They'll be coming across your screen. Sure. Um, um, I'm pleased to uh, be announcing the, the award for the uh, certificate of the concentration for the BME program. And um, the, so the first uh, uh, recognition is for, it goes to uh, Nelson uh, Abarca for tissue engineering and pre-med concentration. Congratulations, Nelson for uh, your accomplishment in this. Uh, Irene Cabanas, Tissue Engineering and Pre-Med. Congratulations. And uh, Fabian Charles for uh, Biosignals and Systems. Congratulations. Shailene Greer, Tissue Engineering and Pre-Med. She was also one of the presenters that just presented. Allison Martinez, Tissue Engineering and Pre-Med. Congratulations. Gabrielle Pena, Biomaterials and Biomechanics. Congratulations. And uh, Kiana Juan, Biomaterials and Biomechanics. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, Professor Sharistani. I want to, uh, just a, a, a little quote, always be yourself unless you want to be a biomedical engineer. How appropriate. I want to, I noticed in the audience, one of my old colleagues, I think he's still there. John Barchi. John, can you raise your hand? John is one of our esteemed judges, and he took time out from playing golf or enjoying his retirement to come back to address technical matters. John, John are you there? Yes, thank you for the stimulation of gray and white um, brain matter clusters. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, John, and thanks for serving as uh, one of our judges. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for. First, the poster presentations. Starting off with, we had 12 competing teams. We had five finalists. The finalists were team four, team two, team six, team eight, and team 12. <laughs> Honorable mention award, it was a tie. It was very difficult for the judges, it was a tie. Honorable mention goes to team six and team eight. Congratulations, Team Six and Team Eight, honor for claiming honorable mention 
honors. Team six and team eight, Professor Sokius and Professor Raj. Jabil Circuits and Apex Medical were the sponsors. Third place in the poster competition goes to team number two, Daniela Lezuala, Paula Arenas Sanchez, and Thomas Schiffer. Congratulations, team number two. Team number two, third place in the poster competition. Sponsor, Nicole Wertheim College of, College of Nursing and Health Sciences, Professor Raj as the faculty mentor. Congratulations, Daniela, Paula, and Thomas. Second place in the poster competition. Drum roll, please. Goes to team number four. Team number four. Nelson Abarca, Santiago Fossi, Christy Menendez, Gabriela Reich, and Anna Valentin. Congratulations. Second place goes to team number four. The sponsor, Panther Biomedical. Professor Ramaswamy was the faculty mentor. Congrats, Nelson, Santiago, Christy, Gabriela, and Anna. And now for first place. Drum roll, please. First place in the poster competition for spring 2021 goes to team number 12. The bouquet speculum. The bouquet speculum. And the award there, $300 uh, in monetary awards, go to Carlos Armas, Raya Naji, Valentina Ralden, and Shadi Selke. I must uh, share with uh, the audience that first, second, and third place the monetary awards are also accompanied by the appropriate colors of medals. And medals will be uh, shipped to you or you can pick those up at the Biomedical Engineering Office. Hello, my name is Valentina Roldan and today I will be discussing the bouquet speculum from Team 12, sponsored by Dr. Jean Bouquet. To introduce, cervical cancer is a cancer that originates from the epithelial cells of the cervical os, with almost 14,000 new cases emerging in 2020 in the US. This cancer is screened for by using what is known as a vaginal speculum. The current one features two blades that open vertically and provide a view of the cervix. Using the speculum can induce vaginal wall collapse in about 30% of patients, obstructing the view of the cervix and making examinations more inaccurate. For our market requirements and design inputs, first, the device must provide a clear cervix vision under all circumstances, including vaginal lateral wall collapse. It must then provide an unobstructed circular cervix view of four centimeters of diameter as given by the dilator and blades. It should also provide a more effective access and better patient experience than the two-bladed speculum. The input then is to have a number of petals greater than three and less or equal to six for a radial opening and equal force distribution. We'll also have an insertive end of a half an inch diameter. It should allow for a full range of motion without repositioning or reinsertion while not requiring a specific instrumentation or position. The input for this is to have an angle between the handle and the speculum head between 100 and 135 degrees. It must also accommodate collecting a sample using the current workflow. A four centimeter diameter would allow for an inward and outward movement of standard length gynecological tools such as cider brushes, swaps, etc. Finally, it must not break when inserted into the vagina, so it must have a minimum yield strength of 3,000 pascals. In terms of manufacturing, low density polyethylene was the material of choice during our design phase. And this was due to its beneficial physical properties, such as its high yield strength and fracture resistance, while having the necessary ductility. This material also meets our disposability requirement by being recyclable and rel relatively inexpensive. However, because LDP is primarily worked with through injection molding, we were not able to feasibly create and use a mold due to budget and time constraints. So we 3D printed our prototype using PLA. Now for simulations, in our simulation testing, we set the material properties of our design to be equal to those of LDPE and subject it to the design of 1500 pascals, which is the upper limit of what is experienced clinically. We observed that the maximum von Mises stresses experienced by the design were far below the yield strength 
of the LDPE, the stress limit, meaning that our design is viable for use without risk of breaking. Now for our verification testing, to test both visibility and pressure resistance of our device, we created a custom-made vaginal phantom using a synthetic female reproductive organ. The organ was compatible with both imaging and surgical equipment and devices, hence providing a realistic experimental testing platform for our prototype. For our methods, we used an acrylic case where we positioned the synthetic organ using wires inside and then sealed the acrylic case to allow for introduction of liquids. We were able to simulate different vaginal pressures by introducing ultrasound gel to appropriate heights in the acrylic case through the relation shown in this fluid equation. Pressures simulated were pressures that span the recorded vaginal pressures in supine positions, as well as to extreme pressures. Both our prototype and the standard speculum were inserted into the vaginal phantom and opened to the desired position, and images of the cervix were captured and saved for further analysis to determine percent visualization area, or PVA. This table shows the PVA of the different pressures groups using this equation. Using an independent t-test, the mean PVA of the bouquet speculum was statistically higher, better, than the standard speculum for 4, 8, 12, 16, and 18 centimeters of water, demonstrating superiority over the two-bladed speculum. Our second benchmark test comprised of verifying gynecological tools compatibility with our device. One of our main market requirements that was that the bouquet speculum must accommodate collecting a sample using current workflow, that is, our device must allow for the use of traditional gynecological tools such as cotton swabs and other cotton tools. For this pass fail test, we stain the cervix to symbolize cervical tissue sample and use an eight inch cotton swab to retrieve the sample, which we were able to retrieve samples in 10 consecutive trials, which demonstrates that the device compatibility with regular gynecological tools is correct. In conclusion, our team has improved the general speculum design with the proposed five-bladed radially dilatable speculum, as well as a 3D printed prototype, which is verified in terms of pressure resistance, cervix visibility, and gynecological compatibility. For the future, it is expected that mass manufacturing will begin through injection molding. This will be accompanied by finding gynecologists and providers interested in implementing the use of this novel design in the US. Finally, it will allow to provide low-cost cervical cancer screening to women in other countries, including developing ones, so that any female has the possibility of being diagnosed and treated. Thank you for your time, and thank you to our sponsor and all the BME faculty. Thank you, Team 12, and congratulations again. Now for the results of the oral presentations, followed by, and I have to remember, the playing of the winning presentation. First, we have 12 teams participating. And the finalists are team number two, team number eight, team number six, and team number 12. Honorable mention goes to team number 12. Team number 12, congratulations on securing honorable mention for the oral presentation. You were just winners in the poster presentation, so congratulations again. Now for third place in the oral presentation for spring 2021. Third place goes to team number two. Team number two with a repeat performance. Daniela Lizola, Paula Orianis Sanchez, and Thomas Schiffer. Congratulations again, team number two. Thank you. And I'm in deep trouble. That's a private joke. You are. Team number two. <laughs> very, very big. I will share the joke a little bit later on. Team number two, congratulations. Second place for the oral presentation, spring 2021, goes to team number eight. Team number eight. Shailen Greyer, Jose Montez, Angel La Vega, and Gabriela Alvarado. Sponsor, Jabil Circuits, Professor Raj as the faculty mentor. Congratulations, team number eight. And with that comes 
silver medals and the monetary awards. Congratulations, team number eight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for. Reigning champion for spring 2021 goes to team number six. Team number six, Herberto Nieves, Claudia Anini, Irene Cabanas, Alexander Ruiz, and their project. And with that, they claim the gold medals and $750 scholarships. Sponsored by Apex Medical, faculty mentor, Professor Nick Sukius. And the project was dermal resurfacing attachment for monitoring speed, the dreams. Congratulations, team number six. And now we will watch the full oral presentation by team number six. Hello, my name is Alexander Ruiz. My name is Irene Cabanas. My name is Eriberto Nieves, or Andy. And I'm Claudia Yanini. And we are team six. Our project is a dermal resurfacing attachment for monitoring speed or dreams. And it was sponsored by Apex Medical. What if we told you that this patient today looks like this because of this? See, Apex Medical recently developed the Renuvion handpiece, the latest in the line of skin resurfacing tools, which uses helium plasma technology to drastically reduce the visibility of wrinkles. The following video demonstrates how this device is used to perform the skin resurfacing procedure. Plasma is delivered to the dermal layer of the skin, which heats collagen fibers and causes them to contract. The result, as you can see, is tight, rejuvenated skin. Importantly, its effectiveness depends on the speed at which it moves across the tissue. Too fast can lead to undertreatment, and too slow can lead to tissue damage. For this reason, Apex presented us with the challenge of engineering a feedback mechanism that responded to the speed at which the user moved the device during treatment. Our team proposed a solution of designing an attachment to the handpiece that can monitor its speed. Moving the handpiece out of the required speed range will result in a visual and auditory alert. This attachment could further reduce the chances of overexposure to the plasma on patients, improve the effectiveness of treatment, and its ease of use for surgeons. To begin, our project's clinical need aligns with that of skin resurfacing. In 2019, almost 600,000 procedures were reported in the US by plastic, cosmetic, and dermatologic surgeons. Additionally, the target population was identified as predominantly female patients above the age of 50. With such a large number of procedures and patients, improving the capabilities of the Renuvion system has the potential of contributing to the success of these treatments. Currently, the only mode for assessing the tissue effects of the handpiece is visual inspection by the surgeon. Therefore, with the help of Apex Medical, we determined the need for an alternative, more quantifiable method for monitoring the effects on the tissue. With regards to the business need, the global skin resurfacing market is predicted to grow by 50.4% within the next six years. In the US, Apex Medical aims to capture about 10% of the addressable market, and in Europe, they aim to reach 16,000 units in sales annually by 2024. Implementing the DREAMS device could enhance Renuvion's marketability against its competitors and assist in reaching these financial goals. Now, my teammate Irene will discuss the requirements of the solution. Thank you, Alex. To address the clinical need, the following market requirements were identified. Corresponding design inputs were then created to satisfy each requirement. However, they will be elaborated on later in the presentation. The first two requirements are that the device must accurately track the handpiece and alert the user whenever its speed has exited the recommended range. Additionally, the device must not deform when exposed to the high temperatures of the resurfacing procedure. The device must also interface and remain attached to the Renuvion without damaging it. Each of these requirements were carefully considered when developing our design concepts. As an overview, each of our design concepts will feature a microcontroller for data processing, auditory and visual feedback, and a speed measuring subsystem. The recorded speeds will be mapped to a pre-programmed speed range to output feedback when the device is moving too slow, optimally, or too fast. The portions of the device that will contact the patient's skin will be encased with a biocompatible and sterilizable polymer. A computer will be used for data storage and powering the device. The device will be able to attach to the Renuvion handpiece. 
Each of the design concepts that will be mentioned in the following slide will primarily vary in how the speed of the handpiece is measured. The first design concept developed was the inertial measurement unit or IMU concept. The IMU includes a three axis accelerometer which records changes in acceleration of the device, which can then be integrated into the velocity. It was found, however, that this approach was subject to linear drift that persisted after signal processing. In an attempt to increase accuracy, the contact-based roller concept was developed. The device was inspired by Apex Medical Standoff, an attachment that maintains the handpiece at constant distance from the skin. This concept would include a roller and rotary encoder on the contacting surface. As the roller spins, the signal from the encoder can be used to determine the speed at which it's moving. However, it was found that manufacturing such small mechanical components was unfeasible given the available resources. Thus, the final single wheel concept was developed. The final concept consists of a standoff that attaches to the handpiece via a slide-in mechanism. It monitors the speed of the Renuvion handpiece by rolling a wheel encoder on the skin. While being a contact-based approach, the surface area that touches the skin was minimized to address irritation concerns. The device is only able to measure speeds along one axis. This was deemed as acceptable since the instructions of the Renuvion recommend moving the handpiece in parallel lines and the current standoffs are rotated about the tip of the handpiece as needed. Now I'm going to pass it on to Alex, who's going to discuss the technology used for the dreams. Thank you, Irene. This table denotes the main technology selected for our device. An Arduino was used for data processing and a transmissive photo interrupter measured speed. The feedback system included a passive buzzer and an RGB LED. While ABS is a suggested material for the design, PLA was used for prototyping due to manufacturing limitations. Speed measuring occurs as the wheel rolls on the patient. Its spokes block the light to the photo interrupter's LED detector, which induces pulses in the voltage output. Using the wheel's radius and the number of spokes, the pulses recorded are converted to an angular velocity and then to linear. This table shows the different feedback states for each of the velocity conditions. Auditory feedback is only outputted when the device is moving too slow or too fast. As a result, the changes in LED color and audio will alert the user when and how to adjust the handpiece speed accordingly. Claudia will now discuss the simulations for our project. Thank you, Alex. Thermal simulations were conducted in order to ensure that the heat that radiates from the plasma emission during the procedure will not deform the standoff at all. In this case, the factor of safety was found to be 1.7. A stress simulation was then performed to guarantee that the standoff would not detach or deform when a force of two pounds was applied to it. The factor of safety obtained this time was 52. Both simulations were conducted using conditions more extreme than those that the dreams would actually be subjected to. As it can be discerned the first observation of the plot obtained, no major deformation occurred. Upon further inspection, the simulations show that the applied stresses are in both cases below the yield strength and the factor of safety of the simulations are both greater than one, signifying that the device will not fail when such stresses are applied. After passing the simulations, we moved on to prototyping. The DREAMS was divided into two systems, a disposable one, the standoff, and a reusable one, the electrical component box, both of which have a three different exterior casing. This was designed in order to reduce the, si the size of the disposable attachment, which now only contains an RGB LED and a photo interrupter. It uses a 3D printer wheel to measure the speed of the device moved across the, screen the skin. All other electrical components, including the microcontroller and the passive buzzer, are inside the reusable system. To ensure that the DREAM satisfied the design inputs, verification tests were conducted. My teammate Andy will now discuss these. Thank you, Claudia. For our first verification test, we tested the attachment portion of the DREAMS to ensure it does not damage the handpiece and remains fixated when acted on by a range of forces. The forces selected are approximately those used to test the current standoff of the Renuvion. The Renuvion handpiece was mounted on a clamp and the DREAMS was attached to it 10 times. Two forces were then applied to the attachment. Afterwards, the tip of the handpiece was inspected under four times magnification for damage. This was repeated to ensure a 95% confidence interval and an 80% reliability rating. A Z-test was performed and the results indicate we could reject the null hypothesis for each applied force passing this test. 
Now, achieving the sample rate design input would allow the drains to output at least two samples in the amount of time it takes the collagen of the skin to contract during resurfacing. To test this, the elapsed time of more than 9,000 iterations was recorded in the program. A one-tailed z-test showed that the difference between the mean elapsed time and the test statistic was statistically significant. Thus, we can reject the null hypothesis, indicating that a sample rate of greater than 50 Hz was achieved and that the test was passed. To verify that the heat produced by the plasma emission would not cause any major deformations to the DREAMS device, multiple ABS samples were measured before and after being exposed to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius for a period of 30 minutes. The temperature chosen serves as an upper limit to what the device might be exposed to for brief moments. A one-sided t-test was performed to compare the change in dimensions against the manufacturing tolerance of the Apex Medical's current standoff. The result allows us to reject the null hypothesis indicating that the material deforms minimally when exposed to the temperature. Since the Renuvion leaves a 3 millimeter diameter area of effect on the epidermis, the dreams must detect changes in position of at least 3 millimeters. To test the sensitivity of the dreams, the device was slowly moved alongside a ruler until it measured a change in position. A one-tailed t-test was performed and the result was a p-value less than 0.05, indicating we're able to reject the null hypothesis and that the experimental sensitivity passed the test. The killer test for the dreams was the accuracy portion of the speed measurement test. Average velocities of the dreams recorded over 3 centimeter and 11 centimeter distances were compared against measurements from video recordings. A paired t-test was performed for both distances. There was no significant difference between the dreams measurements and the video camera measurements. Thus, we failed to reject the null hypothesis indicating we passed the test. Average percent errors across both distances were less than 7%. As a demonstration, the following video will now show each of the feedback states of the dreams without audio. Notice how before it moves, the device is in the idle state with the white light. As it moves too slowly, the light changes to red. Now, a green light will notify the user that they should maintain the current speed at which they're moving the dreams. When moving too quickly, the light instead will blink blue, warning the user that they are under-treating the skin. Ultimately, the dream satisfied the presented design inputs for accuracy, sensitivity, sample rate, thermal resistance, interface, fixation, and damage, as shown in the design outputs. I'd now like to hand the presentation over to Irene, who will go over the cost of the dreams. Thank you, Andy. With regards to the product cost, the total price for the reusable portion of the dreams is about $40. The disposable portion, however, is $11. This cost will be even lower once it is mass produced in the future. With reference to patent opportunities, we recommend that Apex Medical seek a claim. When performing a patent search, no patents were found for a skin resurfacing speed monitoring attachment or anything similar to the dreams. Now I'm going to pass it on to Claudia, who's going to speak about the role of global learning in the dreams project. Thank you, Irene. To be effective in our project, global learning was kept in mind. In regards to engagement, we found in 2020, five new countries have approved the marketing and the sale of the Apex Medical Helium Plasma technology, including for cosmetic procedures. As the Renuvium becomes approved in more countries, the DREAMS has the potential of aiding treatments across the globe. Similarly, global awareness led us to consider the different regulatory environments that the DREAMS device can enter. For example, while the European regulations do not identify the Renuvian system as a medical device, the FDA does. By adhering to FDA guidances and regulations, the DREAMS can then become available in the future in both the European and the American markets. Although the DREAMS was designed for cosmetic applications, when looking at it from another point of view, the device could also be used for other plasma-based medical purposes. An example of these includes treating burn victims by reducing pain and promoting new tissue growth with helium plasma technologies. The DREAMS can thus be explored as an affordable method of monitoring device speeds and aid in consistent plasma application during such procedures. To bring the DREAMS to the market in the future, the sensitivity of the device can be further improved by reducing the size of the wheel, increasing the number of slots in the wheel, or transitioning to a roller design. The result would then be a more accurate measurement across smaller distances. The interior of the DREAMS will need to be hermetically sealed to isolate the internal electronics from patient and user. 
This will address the electrical safety, the biocompatibility, and the sterilizability of the device. Lastly, the encasing of the dreams can be reduced in size by implementing more advanced manufacturing procedures to improve the visibility of the skin while it's being used. As this project came to an end, we managed to engineer a device that aids with skin resurfacing treatments by serving as an effective alternative to visual inspection. We worked hard to overcome restrictions and constraints we faced due to COVID-19 and ultimately created a successful prototype with mechanical, electrical, and software components. On this note, we would like to conclude this presentation by acknowledging and thanking all of the people that helped us throughout this project, as well as thank you for listening. A brilliant congratulations, team number six. And will the winning teams and uh, the audience is also welcome to stay with us as we conclude the official portion of our program. But uh, please remain with us. I believe there's personnel here from media outlet, FIU media outlet. We would like to uh, engage you in a few questions in a short interview. So uh, please stay tuned. And I'd like to turn the lecture, this concludes. program, the official part of our program. Please join us for the interviews and reactions. Thank you very much.